Join one of Pennsylvania's newest paranormal investigation teams on their YouTube channel, Phantom Detectives LLC, and follow them on social media. Phantom Detectives LLC is a professional paranormal investigation team from Wilmington, Delaware. They conduct investigations from historical societies to homes, businesses, to asylums, and more. Every member has been well-trained on history, educated in all eight areas of the paranormal, and will bring an excellent attention to detail to every investigation. Phantom Detectives LLC will be conducting free information systems at libraries all over Pennsylvania. During these sessions, they will go over evidence from past investigations, how they conduct investigations, and answer questions from you. The team will be making numerous trips across the United States to perform investigations in America's most haunted locations. Dream locations hey, Rock Dude here. Wayland Mark DC, and welcome to a special presentation on Gearheads on the Rocket House. House. Today we have special guest from Phantom Detectives, uh, originally, what, Chester County, Pennsylvania, but now in Delaware, I believe. We have Melissa Ferrazano is live with us today. She's uh, a psychic medium, and we have Rick Warner, the, uh, he's the lead investigator, live here at the Rockin' House on Gearheads. Rock you team. know, Mark, we're doing something that's not music-oriented today, but we're doing a 360 here. We're yeah. doing a Ghostbusters episode. <laughs> You know, you I see these it. famous people on television, but they don't really show you what their gear is all about, right? Yes. So the guys we're going to have on today are going to break down what their gear does and Absolutely. how it works. And uh, yeah. we're going to have a good time uh, finding out how these things operate and work. Awesome. So I say we bring them on. What do you think, Rock Dude? Uh, yeah. All right, let's bring on Melissa and Rick to the Rocket House. Welcome to our show. Hey guys! Hey! Thank you for having us. All right, thanks for coming, coming man. Yeah. See, thank you. Yeah. Oh, and you didn't bring Listen. no bad spirits. We're all right. No. Yeah. <laughs> No bad spirits yes, here. Little no cozy bad spirit. here. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. We, we well, brought the spirits for you guys. Yeah. Welcome <laughs> to our show. And we have a special presentation because we've never, like you said, we've never done nothing like this before. And we're excited about doing this here on Gearheads, uh, one of the spinoffs of The Rockin' House. And we got Rick Warner, lead investigator, with us today. And Melissa Ferrazano, she is an actual medium and a psychic. Welcome again to the show. Thank you. Um, I'd like to start this show with like how you guys connected. Okay, well, it first started with uh, myself. Melissa came afterwards. Um, so our director, Joshua Chairs, who's the director of Phantom Detectives, he's right. the one who uh, found me on LinkedIn. Nice. And um, I, came, I come from an investigative background as a certified UFO field investigator under yes. MUFON. And he wanted to bring me into his team using my interviewing skills Love it. to interview clients and also uh, my background of just doing an investigation, gathering data, the facts, putting stuff together. Okay. So, yeah, that's how that happened. And then later on, um, he connected with someone he knew that... Uh, I believe that was your, your mentor, Cindy. Yes, Cindy right? Kaza, yeah. Yes, Cindy oh, Kaza. Boy. And who had highly recommended Melissa, uh, who's our psychic medium, and then brought her in to right. um, found detectives. So Joshua is going to be, later on on the show, we're going to have him on here. He yeah. is the one that started this whole amazing yes. journey yes. Yes. of yep. phantom detectives. Yes. yes. How cool is that? And we will have him on the show very shortly. Well, let's start with, you know, how this all came together with him and how it developed to what he's been doing. I mean, you're doing this amazing stuff. You have really cool gear. You're actually going to show everybody today yeah. on the show how it works and pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, you know, I brought a few things today to nice. uh, show, you know, the audience members that are watching this show. Sweet. Um, some of the equipment we use during investigation nice. and also how, you know, um, how, how everything kind of works and different pieces you can have that will you can use to pick up paranormal evidence, basically. And, you know, Rick, we've been talking a while. We've, you know, we met on LinkedIn the same yes, way. Yes. And um, we've talked about things. And you showed me some really cool footage of some of the amazing uh, hauntings that they actually investigated that are unreal. Like, the, the evidence is there. You can't deny it. It's there. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some of the most incredible ones. I mean, you probably have many. But let's uh, focus on, you know, one, and then Melissa, I'm going to get to how you are connected with the gear and how your psychic medium ability 
works with that. that and how many great. people do you have in your troop here? There's actually three of us. Three. So yep. there's Joshua, Melissa, and myself. Yes. Right. Um, so there was a, we did have a fourth person at one time, but now it's just the three of us. So we actually work you know real well together. Exactly. And each one has a different job that you guys do. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We yes. we each kind of have our own thing, but we but at the same time we also work together uh, as a team. Um, you know, just going through using different apparatuses to conduct our investigation, you know, setting up equipment and doing things like that. Nice. Now, you, you had so, mentioned you would got a background in UFOs, too? Yes, yeah. yes. I'm a certified, um, yeah, I'm actually the uh, executive director for ERC, which stands for Extraterrestrial Research Center. Um, I'm also the director of investigations, and um, I'm also a, a researcher, UFO researcher, or UAP. Uh, if you want to use it, which is a more common term now. So cool. So, yeah. um, so um, is that the term that most people identify what you guys do is, uh, you know, from the movie Ghostbusters is uh, kind of what you guys are? Yeah. yeah, pretty much, except we're, you know, there's some similarities, except with the Ghostbusters, they're actually trying to get rid of the spirits. Right, you know, exactly. Bat, these goofy kind of spirits that you yeah, see yeah, yeah. Uh, that are Plasma. you know mischievous yeah. and doing yes. things like that and they're trying to get rid of them yeah. with their, you right. know, their stuff so um you know we are dealing with uh, paranormal entities however we're not like um we're not trying to expel them from yes. the premises so. that's exactly. a job for somebody yeah. else then like yes. you know, yeah if yeah. somebody really else causing... wanted to do that yeah we don't right. really do that we're this there to capture paranormal activity. And, and who mostly does that? Is that the church does that kind of thing? If it's a the, the demonic, the demonic thing. Well, I mean, it 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 can be. I mean, like, it really kind of depends. Um, yeah, he's running into sometimes. Media. Sometimes people will have, yeah. uh, you know, ghosts that are living in the house. It could be like loved ones that passed away. It could have been someone that um, lived there before they bought the property that passed away at mm. one time could be like Indian burial ground or something like that yes. or it could have been that uh, the house that was built on this land you know there were, it was built on a cemetery and then there's some kind of um, okay. you know uh, s spiritual activity you know from you know yeah. um, mm -hmm. a certain maybe it could be a tribe of Indians or yeah. other kind of right. people that a passed time away period, yes. so yeah so um, you know there's a, a number of things okay but basically um, you know, we don't come in like really as, uh, you know, to do any kind of exorcisms or, or, right. or yes. you know, I mean, if somebody asks us to, I mean, I mean, Melissa's really good with this kind of thing. I mean, if we were going to, really? you know, sage a house or a property mm -hmm. or something that uh, we talked about, gotcha. yes. you know, using uh, sage and uh, some, you know, yeah. holy oil, oil, holy mm -hmm. water, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. And going through room to room to do a blessing to try to remove right. any negative spirits. But other than that, there have been cases where people have uh, demonic activity has been um, found that is, oh, that's is in, amazing. in the home. Yes. So what so, would you say was one of your most amazing ones that you've investigated? Like the most, I know you had many. We've had well, a lot. We, you yes. know, we're going to yeah. like narrow it down because we're doing a show. But what would be one that was like, mind this is amazing. That sticks out yeah. in this your mind. Like, uh, I, like, this is yeah. real. Am I really seeing this? Am I really experiencing this? Yes. Yeah. What would yeah. you say would be if you had to pick one of those? Uh, you know, it, that's a tough question because oh, yeah, there's I so know. many places that we investigated sure. that there, you know, we've captured a lot yes. of good evidence, right? We've yeah. got a lot of good things. Definitely. Right. Right. Every right. place is kind of a little bit different, different when we pick up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I understand that. So, um, but I will say the last investigation we went to was a place called... Uh, Bub's Brewery. Ooh. I can't remember. What's the name of yes. the city in Pennsylvania? Uh, what, what is what is that called? My goodness, it'll it'll come to me um, okay. later. My yeah, my goodness, but it's spelled B U B E apostrophe apostrophe. Yeah, S. do you remember the name of the city though? Uh, no. you know, I I can't remember off offhand. It will come to me though. Yeah, I forgot the yes. name of it too. So yeah. yeah, we've been to so many cities. It's hard to keep track yes. of these things. But when we went into that place, um, there's. You know, it was very active. There was a lot of paranormal yeah, yeah. activity that was found. Nice. Um, it's actually like um, it's it's like a restaurant, a tavern, and a hotel. Like everything yes. just kind of all wrapped in one. Okay. And there's a lot of um, old history there. Um, we went into this one place that was called the Catacombs. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. And when you go in, it's really pretty cool because it's like it almost looked kind of like a tunnel, right? Yes. It's like got these 
you know, it's got this round kind of shape on the sides. Right. And it's made out of these like really stone. old, like, stones. Stone, yes. And then there's these recessed wow. areas that they could place candles in. Yes, right? they have tables set up. You can dine down there. It almost like you're. It looks like you're dining in like a haunted um, uh, tunnel, if you will. So it's pretty. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Wow, yeah, it's yeah. really pretty cool. Yeah, and, and that's that, the video footage I believe yeah. you or Joshua sent me. Yeah. Was that? Well, that particular day, it's pretty okay, amazing. was yeah. crazy, because we were doing a spirit. Uh, box session, which we call the Warner or the Chairs Warner. Warner method. Nice. Okay. And basically, what that is is we are using um, a device called a spirit box, which is it's an it's basically think of it like an AM FM radio. Okay. Right. Frequencies. And it's sweeping different frequencies yep. on the FM channel, on the AM channel. Nice. And you can run through different speeds if you want to go slow. Or you want it to go fast, so it's a little bit different listening to radio because radio you just kind of dial it in, and right. it stays there. Right. Yep. This thing will just keep running through the channels, and basically what you're trying to do as you're asking questions to the spirits, you're trying to get them to communicate through this device using wow. what we call like white noise. Mm -hmm. and Which I've had from her before, white noise. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. And the cool session. thing is, yeah. mm -hmm. is that you know. I mean, you know, you have to kind of be careful when you're listening to certain things. So sometimes you hear somebody talking, and it might be uh, part of a talk show or Radio, somebody announcing something. Yeah. Okay. But we've actually picked up on one investigation where the lady was, you know, basically just saying, you know, fuck you, you know, a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, wow, right. I can't believe I just heard that, right? That was on there, because wow. you know they're not going to do that on yes. the radio, right? Right, yeah. right, yeah. Nope. And, 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 and it was this. You know, clear as a blue sky. It was on there. You can hear a voice saying right. that. And um, wow! But mm. the last one we did in the catacombs, uh, Melissa had a pair of headphones on and mm -hmm. blindfolds. Right. Yep. And I saw the that. idea is, yeah, is that she can't hear um, what the questions Question are that we're asking. asking spirits, because she has the volume loud enough with the noise canceling wow. headphones to block out what we're asking her. Yes. And then many. Instances, That's amazing. when That's... we were asking questions, yeah, we were getting an answer from her that she was picking up from the spirits wow. that she yes. was connecting with. Because what we were asking, most people will just kind of go on and they're trying to listen for something. Mm -hmm. We actually had, she was actually using uh, the power of uh, uh, holding a crystal in her hand and she was actually tuning in right. to see what kind of spirit communication she could get back to enhance yes to enhance are you it. using yes. a uh, quartz um i might have been using a quartz and i believe i was using an amethyst as well Got you. so because i know each crystal has its own properties um yes. and certain ones represent so amethyst for instance uh represents um like psychic abilities um mm -hmm. so it enhances that so um whatever we can get to you know to get those answers whatever we can whatever can help us right uh but we truly have had some amazing experiences one that sticks out in my mind the most is last year we investigated the sanderson museum in chadsford pennsylvania wow uh this was during our world's largest ghost hunt where we were live streamed uh pretty much all over the world that's awesome. Yes. Wow. So, yeah. so cool. um, at the time, we were a team of four, and we were uh, upstairs on the second floor. There's two floors to this museum. Uh, Rick and I had to come downstairs to get a piece of equipment, and we cannot, to this day, figure out why all of our belongings, we're talking hoodies, boxes of equipment, heavy items were moved at the bottom of the staircase something was barricading us in and for today wow. for today for the to life keep of us from going downstairs yes how about it? yes really yeah. yes yeah. so yes yeah, so we're walking down the stairs okay wow and we're looking at each other like we're looking like why is this at the bottom of the how stairs how did this happen so right? we're we're asking our director <laughs> joshua mm -hmm. chairs we're saying wow did you did you put this stuff here? He's like, no, I didn't do it. We were upstairs. And all then, of us. and then the girl that was there, we had asked her if she did it, and yeah. they weren't. They were upstairs the whole time anyway. Right. So we we're thinking, you know what? Maybe there's somebody that's at the bottom level of yeah, the yeah, stairs. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So I go around looking to see, hey, and I'm calling out, is there anybody here walking right. around? Right. We were checking maybe, the doors. Maybe, to make sure maybe we were. somebody's playing a joke or doing right. something. Mm. And there was nobody there. Yes. So we go back upstairs, right, and using the dowsing rods, I think we were using dowsing rods, right? Mm -hmm. We're asking this spirit's questions like, um, are you trying to keep us 
trapped in here? Like, what's going on? The answer came back, no. Wow. But then we asked, like, well, is this, like, some kind of joke? Did you think this was funny? And it was answering, yes. yes. Really? It was, yes. like, playing with you. Prankster, yes. basically, How about pranking it? us. Exactly. And also, yeah. uh, I think the most compelling piece of evidence that night, uh, Joshua, we were doing an EVP session with our recorders. Okay. And he asked the spirit, um, are you trying to keep us upstairs? Are you trying to use our equipment to barricade us and keep us keep us up here? Clear as day. We have it on our phantomdetectives.org website. Clear as day, this EVP, we captured a woman saying, be afraid. Wow. I've yeah, never heard yeah. something so clear. Wow. But it's still, yeah, it, it's amazing. It, it, it's, ama it's really amazing the stuff that, you know, you could, you could pick up. I mean, when yeah. you go on an investigation. Yes. And I will actually have to say that where other teams sometimes go on investigations and come up empty-handed, yeah. we always capture something. Something. We always, always have get something. something. Yes. And Let's hold... that's because how we interact with the spirits, basically. Yes. Let's hold that thought with Rick and Melissa. When we come back, we're going to talk about actually going to be demonstrated with some awesome yes. gear of the paranormal. Real stuff here, guys. This is an amazing thing. And we're going to talk about how Melissa connects with these devices with her abilities. And we come back. Are you going to move our, our equipment back before the night's over again? And we're back Welcome with yeah, go ahead, Mark. Rick and Melissa. And what a cool first segment, Rock, dude, that we just talked about. And some well, of their uh, actual experiences that they had in yes. the field. Phenomenal. Yeah. And now, now we got some gear. That they're going to demonstrate for us, Rock Dude. What do you think? How cool is this? Real paranormal gear. Let's start with you, Melissa. What you have in your hand? What is that? Okay. Well, actually, Rick, this is mostly something that Rick uses during our investigations. These Love. are lights. These are lights used during filming, and they are, there are different colored lights. I know Very Rick, cool. you could explain yeah, this a little so bit better. Yeah. So basically, mm -hmm. so this is a recording rig that I use. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an exterior microphone here. Yep. Um, this actually plugs into um, I use my iPhone 12 Pro Max to record in. Gotcha. Okay, and that, that goes in this clamp in here like this, yep. okay? Yep, And here you see there's four blocks, okay? Each one of these blocks are magnetic. Oh, wow. Okay? Cool. So I can put like that. They stick together like this. Very neat. And yeah. all I do is there's some switches here that are in the back. Wow. And <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and turn this on here and show you guys how this works. Yeah. Okay, so let me get to the same color. Yeah, show, show. Definitely. So right now I have, I'll show you, here's like the, here's the color green. Okay, so we got, there's, so you can see there's a LED lights in green. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'll try to shine that on my face. Can you guys, you guys can see some green color shining on me? Yeah. Okay, so you won't see it as much now because in yeah. the dark, these green LED lights are just going to really pop. But since we're in the light right now, you won't see them as much. But I could switch to uh, blue. Uh, I could switch, switch to purple, red. You know, there's all kinds of colors I can just... And what is the significance flip. of this in the paranormal um, investigation? Well, basically what this is, how we came up with this, is that... So most of the investigating that goes on on paranormal investigations mm -hmm. are done during the dark, taken in the dark. Right. Okay. So most of the time when we are going through and doing an investigation, we would keep a flashlight with us so we don't like trip on any kind of cords or mm -hmm. trip on each other for that matter. Right. right. And, you know, we would go that way. And before when we record, we just use the regular camera light, which is just the regular, just a, just a regular white light. Mm. So what's nice about this is they're actually colored LED lights. So not only are you able to see the subject that you're filming, right. but it makes it more interesting. So instead of just having the same like old you yeah, know, kind yeah, of white yeah, light yeah, kind of make it, it boring, it. it gives it a little bit of flavor because you're incorporating some really cool colors. Creating a mood. Yes. Yeah, it creates a mood. So like say, you know, sometimes we'll film in, in blue, sometimes red, green, um, cyan, uh, purple, you know, that kind of thing. Now, do so, the colors have effect on these entities or these spirits? To any um, degree, or does it make a difference? It doesn't. I I would say it doesn't really make a difference. Mm. Um, I don't think it does in any way, really. Okay. Um, it's more in the, in um, communicating with them, mm -hmm. and if they are willing to communicate with us at that said time. Yep. And if they want to communicate with us by you know us asking questions, doing an EVP session. Yeah. 
or some other stuff. And I have some other equipment here I'd love to show you guys if I could. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And then we'll definitely get to Melissa on um, her connection I'll with set this right here. her psychic abilities. Absolutely. What okay, here? so here, here's... All right, next um, up we I'm have... Uh, you. you got a bunch of stuff there. Yeah, I got some more equipment here to show you guys. Okay, so here's some basic equipment that people can start out with in a paranormal investigation. Uh, this is called a K2 meter, and what it does is it measures EMF, okay, electrical electromagnetic field. wow. fields. Yep. Yeah, amazing. And it's measured in milligauss, okay. So, like, um, when you turn it on, okay, you can see all these lights that come on in different colors, hmm. okay. Yeah. And, you know, it'll pick up uh, certain electrical things. Now, if you put it next to, like, a microwave or you put it next to a refrigerator, Especially if it's leaking any kind of like EMF oh, okay. energy, it'll pick it up. It'll set this off. Got so it. okay. Now, if there's not an electrical field, there's not a microwave, not something electrical, and you're going into the room, we'll take this device, and we'll just kind of scan it. Okay, mm -hmm. like right now, it's just kind of reading low. Yeah, know? right. Yeah. It might be picking up something from. There's so much know, equipment in here, in here, right? Probably. But yeah. when there's you're not going around equipment and this thing really goes off. It'll go up. And into, some kind of spirits around or some yeah, kind of... It, it'll go up into the orange and the red. So yes. you'll see these God. numbers trigger and go yes. off. When they it's really just, spike, you know that yes. something's you, in the room. Yeah, yeah. times called K2 to, meter. There are times when there's like, oh, there's really nothing happening here. That yes, yes. Too? Sometimes you go in a room and you might have one of these and you're not picking up something. Zero. Uh, something else we, we have here is a, a simple kind of a little thing. This is just a, a basic digital recorder okay okay and the digital recorder is what we use is what we call evp sections gotcha. yeah yep. electronic okay. uh, voice phenomenon yep yep and so what you do is you turn on your recorder and while you're asking questions everybody else around you doesn't say anything it's quiet mm -hmm. we'll go through in a room and we'll talk to a spirit and say thank you for having us here today and uh hope you don't mind us asking you guys you know your spirits a few questions is, and is there any spirit in here that wants to communicate with us? Could be a basic question. Or is there more than one spirit that's that's present in this home? You know, right. Just is questions there, like is there right, anything right, right, you would right. like to tell us? You right. know, um, mm -hmm. yes, yes, we're open to listening to you. This is your time. And the, the, the number one thing is it has to be complete silence because these will pick up absolutely everything. And sometimes when we go and, and we well, um, review our evidence... You have to really, you know, it's really okay. sensitive. Yes, yes. You, you like, have to listen to it. So that's why yeah. we'll do like what we call like a phantom time, which is yeah. our quiet time. We say it's phantom time. Everybody should. Where yeah. we'll yeah. take turns asking questions, <laughs> yes. but we can hear ourselves in the recording asking questions. Yes. But what we're looking for is for the spirits to latch themselves on to these devices. Yes. Right. And to try to answer questions. Sometimes it's a word. Sometimes it, it could be like a short sentence or a longer mm -hmm. sentence. Yep. That yep. sounds like a good way to communicate with the spirit through that device. There. Yeah, yes. yeah. Like the, the last audio. one we did, we were getting some there were scratching noises. I was picking up in my oh, EVP, wow. and there was a, a dog that had passed away there. Mm -hmm. And then you can also hear some barking and stuff. Well, we didn't hear any barking when we were conducting our investigation. Mm -hmm. And if the recorder, if we didn't hear it in that room. The recorder shouldn't have picked it up if, unless there was something really there. Right. Is there like a starting point? You get into a situation, you say, well, can you let us know you're here? That kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, we'll ask for some kind of communication thing. Yes. So, and that, that can even um, happen. Uh, the spirits can communicate with some of, some of the other equipment that Rick is going to show. Um, okay. it, it'll make it easier for them to say, hey, we're here. So, right. so yes. this particular vice, that looks neat. okay, this mm -hmm. thing here is called a V3. It's a REM pod. And basically what happens is you can see how this... Sensitive. Yeah, yes. You know, like right now, let's see if I can just set this down. Okay, I'm not doing anything, but if I cross the it's gonna, field, it's going to pick it up. Yeah. See mm -hmm. how it's sensitive that it goes yeah. off. Yes. So it has a little antenna here to make it sensitive. So you see these little colored lights, yeah. you guys, that it's going off. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. And that's a really cool um, device for picking up. Yeah. Yes. So that being said, we, we want to be well away from our equipment so it isn't just us walking by. You know what I mean? We try to keep everything as authentic as possible. Got so, you. yes. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. Here's another little uh, what's called cool. a lantern rim yeah. pod. And basically, you know, it looks like just a regular outdoor lantern. And that's what it was at one time. Yeah. Until, yeah. you know, this was modified 
to, to, to be used as a paranormal piece of love it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, this one's mine. Melissa has one as well. Hers has different colored lights than this one. But you turn this on, basically, and when you turn it on, there's little... This one's not as loud as the other one that I had, but you can see how when I touch it, there's like little little LED lights yeah, are going Yeah, they're catching on. the frequency and the vibration. So basically the idea is is that if there's something paranormal latching onto it, this thing will actually start going on. Right. Yes. Very cool. So it's a very similar concept, concept to the last piece of equipment that Rick uh, has shown. Um, right. We want to stay well away from it. We try to spread our pieces of equipment out in the room because, again, uh, I try to debunk everything um, possible. Let's make sure it isn't going out, be, uh, going off because it's near electrical electrical equipment. Let's make sure it isn't going off because these pieces of equipment are too too close mm. to each other. Yeah. So um, I really, we, I mean, all of us, we really try to keep it as authentic and real as possible. I love it. That's so. We, so we try to move. So the logic, you get all yeah. the logic out of the way. Yes. So this way, you can say, well, this is something really happening here. Yes. Yeah. And and the weird thing is, is that okay when you go into a paranormal investigation, you really don't know what pieces of equipment are going to be right, set up yes. because you have to kind of think mm. of them like children yes. okay so like when a children come in into a room and let's say there's a chest of toys let me describe this real quick that, yes. that we're talking child about. Yes, this is a great example yeah that's another one okay yes. like this one here we're talking about right yeah this is called this is called the scare bear, bear okay scare bear. Yeah. 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 and what happens is is, is that if if, no, there's a such thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so great. If it gets touched by a spirit, okay, you can see how it's going off. It's yeah. a little, you can see it really good at night, gang, but it's you won't see it good here in, in this light. But in the dark, trust me, you're going to see colored lights at the feet. Yeah. And it, and it just, you can see the, like a red light right in there going off. Yeah. So that's called the scare bear. And sometimes uh, we've had this go off on some investigations and other investigations yeah. we haven't. And this thing here is something else that we use quite a bit. This is made by a company called Ghost Stop. <laughs> and this is called a spirit box. It looks just like an AM, FM radio. Yeah, kind it's of. It's got an yeah. antenna on it, oh, as yeah. you can see. Look at okay. that. Okay. And you Transistor turn... Transistor radio. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you turn this on. Okay. And this and lights fun. up. Oh, wow. Okay. FM. So it says scanning FM, right? Okay, yeah. so I'll hit the scan button. <laughs> Turn the volume down. So basically, right now, it's scanning at different stations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you can adjust the speed to go slower. Right now, it's going. Sound depression. But there, now I have it on like. Uh, Dude, hey, that's on level five. Say four. Do you yeah, expect one of the spirits to start walking through here, perhaps? Yeah, so basically, white you noise. Go, yeah, it is. You know, shut this off so yeah. you guys can hear you, me. Yeah, but, you get the But concept. basically, what's happening right. is, so think this is like, think of like a regular AM, FM radio, but this has an SD card, okay? Okay. And wow. uh, so, right here, let me see if I can show you where it's at. Okay, so. Yeah, Rock, dude, I never knew there was this many devices for paranormal. There's a yeah. little... Oh, there's so much more. Yeah. There's, <laughs> yeah. So right right here <laughs> with the volume app, there's a little compartment that you put an SD card in here. And this has the ability to record internally. Wow. So if a spirit was to communicate with us using this device, right. oh, cool. as it's sweeping the AM oh, wow. channels, that, that will be picked up on the, card. the SD card. How about yes. it? And then from there, what I can do is I can take this Too cool. and um, I can plug it into a card reader, or I can, or I can you know, plug it, download plug it. this into my computer. Yeah. And I could download the file and listen to it. You know, usually we'll put on like a set of headphones or something to listen to. Yes. Try to pick, see what picks up. Yes. And sometimes, you know, you're, what you're doing is you're looking for any kind of communication that doesn't sound. You have to use a little bit of discernment. It mm -hmm. takes some practice because yeah. sometimes, you know, you might hear somebody talking and that's just the guy on the radio station right. saying right. the next song. Right. Right. So you have to use some discernment yes. a little bit. Yes. So over yeah, time get you challenging. get practice knowing how, what, what to, to listen for. weed out. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Melissa, let's talk about how you use your cell phone. Yes. With your connective of psychic ability. Yes. Yeah, so and these devices. Yep. There's um, many, there's actually a few devices that I use. Um, 
So this I usually keep on me. And of course you mentioned crystals in the beginning. Yes, definitely. As, def a, to as a tool. Yes, to mm -hmm. um, help and enhance communication. Yes. So there, this is a device called the Spirit Talk app. There's many different spirit apps that people uh, may download. Um, this I love the most. Uh, this I have great results with. Wow. So what happens is before I use any piece of equipment, we go into investigations and we call it the initial sweep. So um, mm. the guys may come in with, um, uh, like the EMF, something very basic. Right. Uh, they may come in with an EMF and they may go around the room and see, you know, if they're getting any hits on that. Where me, I'm coming in with no prior knowledge. I'm to know no knowledge about the history of the location. I, I say I go in there blindly. Yeah. Because, again, I always stress accurate as possible right so yeah. my the like first that. thing yes the first thing i come in with is a notebook and pen that is my main piece of equipment and i am jotting down everything i'm tuning into gotcha. so joshua okay. yes joshua especially i mean he knows the history uh of the of um the locations that we investigate i mean nice. from top to bottom so um, I start off with my notebook and pen, and I tune into everything that I'm picking up on. Wow. And then um, through um, my Spirit Talk app especially, um, I will start getting hits. Uh, words will start popping up that will verify what I'm tuning into. So, for instance, wow. if I'm picking up on the spirit of a child, uh, the word uh, baby may come up. You know? Oh, gotcha. So, so I see how it gives you hints or something. So, yeah, so it, it, it gives yeah. her confirmation. Yes, gotcha. it's confirmation. So it's like I'll tune into it first, and then later on these words will come up. Wow. So, um, you know, and, and then what happens is, like, the example that Rick used, later on other pieces of equipment will verify what I've, what I've uh, tuned into as well. So, for instance, we went into um, an apartment in Philadelphia, and the first person I picked up on, an angry woman, she did not want us in there. Wow. Uh, I feel that she was a prior uh, resident. Right. And I said, this woman, she just has an attitude. She does not want us in here. We are invading her space. Mm. So later on, we used that ghost box, and that's when we were getting cursed at. Oh, it was a female's it? voice She's telling off. us. Yes. Literally. So wow. that is, <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting is how. Is there a point where, mm -hmm. for example, it doesn't. You, think it might not be safe to be at the location or there have been times where uh, I'd say at least twice Question. maybe three times where um, I wouldn't say that it maybe it isn't safe but you're just feeling a lot of um, negativity, negativity right. because you know in the spirit world you're gonna have nice spirits and you're gonna have not not so nice spirits kind of like I was telling you earlier yes. about they were they were a jerk and when they were alive and yes. they were a jerk while they're dead. They're exactly. still, yeah, still the same jerk. And they <laughs> may that yeah. negativity we may start I to like feel. That. Yes. Right. We we've gone good, in there feeling good way to put it. Yes. And sometimes uh -huh. too, like like our last investigation. Now the main thing we, we do know if, if yeah. the spirit was murdered, that's the problem. It could be Ooh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> that's all right. We, we well we had the last investigation we were at and it kinda hit me the worst and then it hit Melissa later. But we were at this lady's house uh, conducting an investigation that was like a, like would you say like a like a ranch house kind of mm -hmm. thing with a, they it's had a, farm, a, farm a, house, a, yeah. a farmhouse yes. with a with the with the barn and a bunch of animals wow. and a bunch of horses and cool. things like that. So we were doing an in, uh, outdoor investigation and going through the barn, um, and then we made our way in the house. Well, the minute I walked into the house, I felt. A heaviness over my entire body. Okay? Right. Yeah. I felt a heaviness in my chest. Yep. I felt like it was hard to breathe, and yeah, it was a little bit hot because she didn't have. She didn't have AC, and you figured she didn't it's, have the yeah. AC, and there was fans mm -hmm. going. But at the same time, it yeah. was even spirits are moving. Yes. Yes. It, yeah, it was actually like we're yeah. here. <laughs>
you're in this house and I'm saying, man, I go, I don't know, I'm feeling kind of sick right now. I was feeling this sickly feeling, like yeah. almost like, and I'm a pretty healthy person. I eat good. I work out a lot. And I'm feeling this heaviness like in my chest, like the worst I've ever felt in any investigation. Oh, wow. And they're asking me like, you okay? I go, I don't know, man. I'm feeling a little lightheaded right now. And, you know, it was a little bit warm. So I know the temperature might affect a little bit, but I knew it was more than that. I could just feel it in my bones. Yes. Yeah, There's something, something in this some, house that's sucking the life out of yes, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And it wasn't until we did, um, we connected, uh, we did the, the uh, Warner Chair Spirit Box uh, session. Yep, I had the blindfold and I had the headphones on, and yeah. I was seeing what was coming out of that um, ghost box with the mm. with the white noise. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, yeah. She was yes. all connected to that, and we were asking questions, and we had gear. Um, we had our digital recorders on, mm -hmm. as well as other gear, trying to see what we could pick up, mm. and um, she couldn't see a thing. And she mentioned during our session, the Spirit Box session that she was feeling a heaviness that was in her chest. Wow. Mm -hmm. And almost like it was a little bit hard to breathe. Yeah. Remember yep. picking that yep. up? Yep. Yes. And okay. I could tell by looking at her that she looks like she was like a Getting person winded. who's drained. Yeah. Wow. Like something was suck, sucking the energy out yes. of her. Yes. Wow. So then I knew it wasn't just me. Yeah. I knew it was okay. happening yep. to her as well. Yes, exactly. And I was holding crystals wow. to intensify that. So, mm. yeah. So we, we use everything that we possibly can. Yeah. I mean, all of our resources. So, yeah. So it is interesting that what I tune into later on, uh, our equipment somehow confirms it. And mm. um, and Joshua again knows the backstory. So we, it's yeah. like it's like putting together a piece of a, of, of a puzzle. It Amazing. all comes together. It's really cool. How now we touch based on stories and equipment. Yes. Now, what got you guys interested in this kind of thing to begin with as younger individuals? Very good question. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> so here's the thing. I mean, okay. So for me personally, um, I've always been interested in anything the paranormal. If it was um, ghosts, um, spirit activity in that, you know, haunted houses, that kind of thing. And also um, extraterrestrial events. That's, And sometimes, too, they cross paths with one another. It's nothing I want to mention. Know, I guess if you're so uh, you know, into horror movies and stuff, that might have enhanced horror movies and all that kind of thing. Yeah, like yeah. Or and, see, aliens and, or and coming with Melissa's background, basically. Fiction, you know, yes. all ties yeah. in together. Yes. Yeah, but, and as far as Melissa goes, I mean, you know, being a psychic medium, you know, she's always been able to tune in to people's loved ones that passed away and that kind of thing and picking up... Um, uh, somebody that passed away in a particular house or certain events and things that, that she felt that occurred. Mm. Mm -hmm. So she's able to bring in her talents as a psychic medium into the investigation. So, you know, ghost hunting isn't for everybody. Um, there's some people <laughs> no. that are, you know, terrified the, of the uh, idea. For dead a lot people. of it, yeah. Looking for dead people. They're yeah. thinking like, you know, yeah. communicate with the <laughs> yeah. dead, you know, which is really... Yeah. That's exactly what we're doing. Yeah. We're com we are communicating with dead people. Yes. And the thing is, mm. honestly, we've actually been pretty fortunate that we haven't had any really scary situations. Right. But there's sometimes teams will come in, and they've had you know their backs somebody you scratch know scratch their back, scratch or, their yeah. back, or slap their back, yes. and get the hand mark, or scratches yeah. all over their back, or yep. try to so push them downstairs. Really does go on. That oh, stuff yeah. happens. Yeah. Oh my yeah. yeah. lord! It yeah. does. Yeah, because you yeah. could have. Um, you know, it's it, it, people that think that you know. I'll be running into it, the hills. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's not it's not all just people we're talking about here. You know, we're talking about people. We're talking about people's Entities. pets, dogs, yes. cats, yep. yes. horses, animals that have passed away. Right. Um, and then you have uh, on the darker side. Okay. Then you have uh, demonic entities mm -hmm. yeah. that could be in a dwelling. Absolutely. It could have been yeah. somebody that was. That lived in that house. Uh, maybe they were, um, they were mm. doing some some bad things with mm -hmm. the occult, you know, right. and using oh, yeah. Yeah. boards and, yes. mm -hmm. and you know getting into black magic and that kind of thing. And they were, and that is Draw, attracting yeah. that energy. evil. That exactly, evil exactly, because there there has been a time where prior to an investigation, a, a um, somebody reached out to me and said, "Hey." Um, 
we're, we're, we have all kinds of things going on. I'm capturing all kinds of things on my home camera. I'm capturing orbs, but however, I've captured some scary faces, mm. and I've taken a look at those uh, uh, images, and I said, you know what? Um, I think somebody was playing around with something in that house mm. prior to you guys moving in, mm. and the homeowners actually researched the history and found that one of... Uh, a prior owner was playing with a Ouija board. And, you know, I have heard people playing with spirit boards, and it's okay, but there is a right way to go about it. They mm. must have left open a portal or yeah. something. You have to be careful with that stuff. you got to know how They're to... They're dangerous. Yes, exactly. So I actually had the client um, do a, a house clearing. I showed the client how to do a house clearing prior to us going in there. Right. Um, you know, and, and we were so much better for it, and obviously they were too, because it, it definitely toned things down. Because that reminds yes. me, because I did a photo shoot at the church in Valley Forge Park, and there's a lot of activity in that graveyard and mm -hmm. all, and orbs yes. came up in my photos, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. How so. about it? Yeah. Yes. Isn't that uh, cool? Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of orbs, oh, okay, yeah. so I, I was telling Marky Z about, hey, you know what, man, like one particular night, okay, because there's, you know, we got these two dogs, and then there's these big kennels they sleep in at night. Yep. And so... Um, usually they're pretty good about coming in, you right. know, but one dog, you know, in particular, um, yeah. she didn't want to go in the kennel, no. right? a little bit nervous about going in and that yeah. kind of thing. And I wanted to record, you know, how playful the dog gets yeah. and, it, and how it's kind of funny how she doesn't want to go in. So I'm recording this, not looking for anything or whatever. And all of a sudden as I'm recording, I go, man, I just saw two orbs fly by, right? Yeah. So two orbs fly by. And then, you know, I'm going through, I'm thinking, wow, I'm really picking up some stuff here. Yep. And then, and then I'm like, hey, if, if there's a spirit in here, can you make those orbs fly, fly by again? All of a sudden, you could see a whole flurry of them. Yep. And these, somebody might think like, okay, well, maybe it's a reflection or something. No, because or bubbles. reflected, <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, there was nobody blowing bubbles. No. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Oh, midnight or something. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I used to blow bubbles, but I put away my my b bubble blowing hobby about a week ago. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no so, so what happens Large is wealth. you yeah, see yeah. these <laughs> these lights instead of so like a reflected light, like when you see a light reflection of something. Yes. You could tell it's like uh, if I took a, a, you know, like right now I, I'm looking at the picture on the wall. I could see a reflection of light on there. Yeah. Okay. Now if you took that picture and, and off the wall and tilted it, you could reflect that light to, to move mm -hmm. to it. Right. See, there's around. obvious places in a right. photograph from photography. You know where the shiny metal and the stuff like the metallic yeah. stuff on your photograph right. is. Yeah. Yeah. the yeah. guitar or something. Yep. When it's yeah. someplace other than the metallic right. part, you know it's yeah. The or real if you're deal. shooting outside and you got lens flare caused by the sun, exactly. Yes. You yes. know that's lens flare. Yes. And right. It's right. not it like isn't, a UFO. It or, yes. So you get shiny stuff like in parts of your photograph that ain't supposed to be there in yeah. different areas. Yeah. Right. So these were actually balls of light that. You know, would 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 float across in these yeah. patterns. Right. Like this. It's a very <laughs> intelligent way. It isn't an insect. You're bringing you me know, right back to the to the, to the, to the Park. Yeah, yeah. 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 Rock, dude. I want to let you know something. I'm going to let you guys know as well. We have the footage of this, and we will feature yeah. it on and you this know what? show. So you guys are don't gonna, go nowhere. You guys are going to love the footage of the orbs oh. that I sent to Rocky Z. Yeah. Because these things are unreal, man. I mean, yeah. you see yep. flying across it's the screen. It truly is. And it's it's, away. Really, it it's is. one of those things when you capture evidence and you didn't know what's going to happen. And, and we have more it. evidence. Now, yeah. Mark, we could take a break, I guess, at this point. But I want to come back and talk a little bit about UFOs, if we may. Because we got the experts sitting here. Sure. Definitely. I'll tell you why. That. Scare Bear says... Don't you go anywhere. We have more scary things to do. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. We're coming right back. <laughs> Come on. Let's go. Go to bed. Wow. There's definitely orbs in here. There's definitely orbs in here. There's some spirits here. Can you fly it, make your orbs fly across the screen again? There we go. Wow. Back. 
Rick Warner, Melissa Farazano. It's a special episode of the Gearheads, you know. Uh, and we're going to talk about the connection of paranormal and extraterrestrials, as we have Rick Warner is also a executive director of ERC, Extraterrestrial Research Center. Let's talk about this. Okay. Brother. Sounds good, man. What would you like to know? Well, Brian, well, I think you the, have a question. Here's the question. I mean, the I guess question. the common question is, <laughs> what do you make of Area 51 or reverse engineering there, and do extraterrestrials really do exist? Uh, that's the thing. Well, here's the thing. I mean, you know, there's people that, that you know, there's reverse engineering that goes on today in secret locations. Mm. Um, not just Area 51, uh, but there's other places as well. Right. Um, and, you know, as far as Area 51 goes, uh, you know, it has been said that there has been, there was reverse engineering that was done there by a guy by the name of Bob Lazar. Mm -hmm. Some people tried to uh, defame his um, credentials yeah. um, and say that he didn't go to school where he said he went to and all this kind of stuff, and they erased information. But, um, you know, there's people that could, you know, say that, you know, his, um, all his schooling data had been, like, wiped off. So, like, well, it's like, mm -hmm. if somebody wants to erase you from where you said you worked for this company yeah. or you went to this school, they could, uh, that they could easily be done. <laughs> yep. But they don't want stuff getting out there. Yep. So, but I will say this, um, you know, you're going to have people that believe the, in extraterrestrial events or UFOs. Now, more commonly, you hear the term called UAP, Unidentified Area Phenomenon yes. or Phenomena. Yes, that is what the term is now, yeah. I believe. And so, yeah. um, the way you kind of have to look at it is that, so 80% of what's seen out there can be attributed to um, either something um, which is a man-made object, like, for mm -hmm. an example, could be a military aircraft or could be a plane, or it could be a weather phenomenon, or yep. some kind of a natural phenomenon. Yep. So there's many things that some, and sometimes it could be the other perhaps natural phenomenon. Perhaps a satellite, be, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it could be a satellite. You know, mm -hmm. something you're seeing, um, a star can appear to be a, a something extraterrestrial. Or just a generic um, aircraft could... Or even a planet, you know, mm -hmm. even a yeah. planet. Or the way yes. you move. Like, let's say, like, um, for an example, when you're going through your um, the mountainside, going through... You know, you're driving your car, you're going around um, a bunch of hills and turns, and you see the moon, right? Okay, and you see the moon, and it's over here, but now it's over here. Right. It's all over the place. You're thinking, okay, well, you think the moon is moving. Well, it's, it's, it's still in the same spot, but when you move, it, looks it makes like things look like it's moving. Right. So if you're standing in the bushes, yes. and you see a really bright star up there, let's say it's Betelgeuse, you're looking at this very bright star. Or looking at the planet Venus or Mars or something like that. And all of a sudden you're moving your head like this, you're bobbing and weaving. Well, as you move in and out, it makes that object appear to move, but it's not the object moving when it's in fact you're moving. Mm -hmm. So if you have 80% that could be attributed to natural phenomenon or man made craft, that leaves, there's 15 to 20% out there that isn't uh, man made. In, mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and there's a good chance that that is extraterrestrial. So you also need to think of the fact that uh, not throughout, you know, so every day throughout the United States, all over the states, and including the world for that matter, there's people that capture through photographs, video camera mm -hmm. recordings of things that are seen in the sky, you know, yep. different extraterrestrial type events. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some things that just can't be explained. So when you, if you can't explain something to a natural phenomenon or a man-made craft, right. that leaves you with something that can't be identified. And you just have to look at it that, you know, mm -hmm. this, this has to be something extraterrestrial. The other thing to think about is, okay, so we, our planet, we're in the Milky Way galaxy, okay, which is like from point to point, like, trillions of miles right. apart from end to end. And there's a lot of other planets out there. We just know a few of the basic planets. Mm -hmm. But there's billions of planets out there. And, 
you know, there's probably millions and billions of galaxies out there that are all made of these galaxies that have all these other planets and that kind of thing. So, in my opinion, I think it's a little naive to think that of all the planets out there, okay, yeah, yeah. and all the solar systems, that we're the only, we're the only planet ones, that yes. has any any um, like life form, yeah. Yeah, any any real life form, animals, mm -hmm. people, you know, right. that right. kind of thing. Yes. So that's kind of the way I look at it. You have to look at the overall evidence, and you know, there's places all over the world that are spotting things all the time. Yep. And yep. when you have reliable witnesses, okay, like air, you have uh, military fighter pilots. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like the Nimitz thing in. Uh, the know, Navy is a big one. Uh, you see a lot of these sightings. The Navy, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the way that you know they were seeing the Tic Tac object and stuff like that. Yep. And then you have the the uh, called uh, uh, the USO, which is underwater submergible object. Where so go in underwater. 2022, we're finding out more. It's not so much we don't want to talk about it or cover it up. They're like coming out and telling us like we see things we don't. We don't we know what explain, it is. Right? Well, here's the real yeah, deal. Right. Okay, um, what a lot of people that's a whole new what thing. a lot of people yes. don't realize. Okay, um, one of the things the government is very good about doing, and that's covering up stuff. Right. Okay, um, yep. sometimes the government is sometimes it's covering up their own illegal activities or things that they do, mm. um, and then there's certain things that the government doesn't want people to know. In the case with, you know. So before, you know, when you had the Project Blue Book and all that kind of stuff, yeah. they would say, oh, you know, there is there is no UFOs. It mm -hmm. doesn't exist kind of thing. They always try to have a logical explanation. Because they want to yeah. cover yeah. that up yeah. because they don't want to get people freaked out. Mm -hmm. They don't want people to panic. But Blue Book was mostly a misinformation campaign, basically. Well, I mean, it was all, you know, done by the Air Force and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there was already credible stuff that was picked up by pilots and things like that. A lot of stuff was just blacked out, mm -hmm. but yeah. um, you know, and it was real documentation. A lot of people don't book. realize mm -hmm. that the CIA, mm -hmm. the FBI, and the DoD, mm -hmm. you know, have been conducting for a while now mm -hmm. um, investigations into um, are UFOs are really out there? You know what's yeah, out there yeah, yeah, yeah. and doing that. So even when uh, Clinton was uh, president at the time, uh, Bill Clinton. You know, they had a, a task force that was doing that. And the FBI was behind uh, doing investigations, the CIA and all that. So you have all these organizations that were conducting their own investigation. And right. just recently, yes. you had these public hearings that were that are talking about stuff. Hmm. So this is nothing new. This has been going on for a long time. Oh, the only yeah. reason you're hearing about it more is because there's been a lot more sightings than there ever was before. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know... You could only brush stuff under the rug so long. Mm -hmm. yeah, you could yeah, only yeah. keep people in the dark. In yeah. the dark so long, mm -hmm. but it comes to a point where now, when you have so much evidence, mounting yeah. evidence, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. stuff that's out there. It speaks yes. for itself. It yes, speaks exactly. for itself. It's Can't like now. It. Yes. Now you know we have all this evidence of like that. You know people aren't stupid, so you can't brush yourself under the rug forever. No. So that's why now, you know, they're opening up little by little, little, by little. to start talking mm -hmm. more and more about stuff. Right. Yeah. They're under extreme pressure more now than ever mm -hmm. to, exactly. to, to get stuff out. Yes. Now, as far as we mentioned Bob Lazar, he actually has collaborators who work at, you know, Area 51 who validate, yeah, what he's saying is real it's, yeah. uh, and that kind of thing. Yeah, so. and there's been, there's been other people too as well that, that have seen things. That's probably come out and mm -hmm. said Bob Lazar's story sounds legit. Yeah, and there was a guy just recently, and I can't remember his name because I'm horrible with names, <laughs> but uh, but there was a guy, and I saw him on the show, and he was at Area 51, mm. and he kind of overheard a uh, conversation, and he actually seen for himself that there was a uh, extraterrestrial being that they were doing, that Experience, they were experimenting yeah. on. And he was, you know, like looking at this, and then you can hear him talking wow. about stuff. And there's people that have claimed uh, in the military that they've seen crashed. Um, there's more than, there's several people that have witnessed um, alien spacecraft that had, that had crashed. And there's yeah, yeah. actual bodies and that kind of stuff. So, you know, you're going to have some people that they're just not going to believe anything no matter what. And right. that's okay. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. of course. You know, because right. some people, you may say, you know, 
they may say, well, you know what, like... Uh, Until I see it for, my, myself. If I don't, yes, myself. If I don't yes. see God show up at my doorstep and shake my hand, I'm not going to believe, believe exactly. it. God, God, God There's exists. people like that, and there are also people yeah. that want to hide their, 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 their fear yes. by not believing. It yeah. makes them yes. safe yes. in their little safe. world. Yes, yeah. exactly. They feel safe. Now, exactly. Here's, here's a good question That's for true. you. Do you do you, as aliens go, are they... Are they hostile, do you think? Are they friendly? Or what, what is their motivation for contacting Earth, you think? Well, I mean, here's the thing. I think, like right now, I mean, because you, you, you also have to look at the cases, uh, the many cases that have been going a long time mm -hmm. of people that have been, that abducted. claim to have been mm -hmm. abducted, mm -hmm. have undergone hypnosis. Right. And, and, you know, a lot of these stories are similar yep. from different people that have, that are what you call, abductees or experiencers mm -hmm. is yeah. another yes, word that's yes, used. Yes, that's what I know. And yes. people that, um, devices have been picked up on um, x-ray, uh, implanted devices. Oh, yeah. And it wasn't shrapnel from, let's say, like if you're out in the war and, in a, in a, you know, fighting on the front lines and a piece of shrapnel blew it and it got in right. underneath your skin or something, that's one thing. But if you have like, you know, things like little transmitters, you know, things like that, um, there's some crazy stuff that that you know. Sometimes they'll they'll implant devices like between the thumb and this first finger here, mm. like right in this meaty part. And there's times sometimes it'll be in the neck, or um, there'll be uh, people that have been abducted have submitted photographs. Um, they looked at their skin, where you know there'll be markings on the skin. Well, somebody could say, well, yeah, maybe that's something like a skin disorder. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it could be, but then when you have dots into the shape of a triangle okay mm -hmm. um, al also if you have missing skin like mm -hmm. there's sometimes there's scooped out skin that's yeah. missing mm -hmm. from the body or yep. certain scars yep. yeah yep. particular markings that that are just like not the normal kind of thing. Right, and if more know. than one person, these people that have been abductees, they've got the same thing going on. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And all of a sudden, you know, somebody finds a, 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 a something that's the size of a, a round little BB that's mm -hmm. taken out underneath your skin. Right. And sometimes these these devices that have been found will have a membrane around mm. it, okay? A membrane yep. that they can't even cut through the membrane of this oh, stuff. Oh, my so goodness. Tough. It's wow. Like a, you know, um, and when they'll, they'll take an EMF reader mm. and, you know, basically when it's implanted in a person you can hear it going off you take yeah, that k2 yeah. meter and it, mm -hmm. it's the milligoss is going crazy it's going high milligoss off of these meters where after the the implant device is extracted right now you're not getting you're anything. not getting anything coming but you know you're not getting any emf so wow. is it is it common knowledge that they're super more advanced than we are is that that the thing well yeah i mean definitely because uh you know they're they're much more way ahead of their time than what we have with the technology mm -hmm. goes. So yeah. Can I, I mean, say something? I know some people believe that they are us in the future coming through a different dimension. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, I, I can't really say what, that, but but the fact that um, that they can fly at incredible speeds, which oh, yeah. has already been shown on radar, how oh, yeah. the we don't even have the technology that they have to be mm -hmm. able to fly. No. And, you know, you'll see, like, a videotape of what appears to be an extraterrestrial craft yeah. flying, you know, darting back and forth at incredible speeds and not leaving any heat signature. Mm. And there's no exhaust or anything. Right. Yeah. right. I mean, that's the main exactly. thing I hear. And that's, like, crazy. Exactly. You know, yes, like yes. Be able like to that change like direction you. on a diamond and mm -hmm. disappear. Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. And just jumping from place to place. Like right. That. Exactly. Yeah. Time travel. I was like, oh, that, that's, so, that's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Or interdimensional is what yeah. I think yeah. it is. Yes. Yeah. They're coming in and out of a portal. Yes. Yeah. Is that yeah. But is the obvious thing we find is that the the jump in technology has been quick and quick to the point where there's no way we could have done that without knowing from some 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 other place. Yeah. I yeah. mean. And then there's other theories too about, um, you know, bending time yeah, yeah. to where mm -hmm. it's like if you took a, uh, if you had a rubber pencil and let's say here's from A to B, okay, but you take that rubber pen pencil and then you bend it, right. 
it brings those two points closer together. So you're bending the time. That's time warping, basically. Mm -hmm. Yes. To be time warping to travel from one place to the next. Einstein you know, talked about that. What I found interesting, too, you yeah. go back to the original Star Trek series, the communicator is the cell phone. Yeah. You know. Flip phone. There's yes. so many things yeah. that you could go down the list on that yes. original Star Trek, like, did someone know something funny yes. in the government, give them information oh, yeah. or something? They were just something? so ahead of the time. I don't know. So the writer time. on that was just like mm -hmm. so far advanced yes. on what was going on. Right. Yeah, I mean, and if you think of like, I mean, just our own technology alone. Mm -hmm. It jumped. Know, yes. You know, Big time. I mean, you know, Definitely. like, uh, you know, microwaves are, have been around a very long time. I mean, now you can go to Walmart and you can buy a microwave oven for... Probably bucks. less yeah. than hundred dollars, yeah. hundred dollars, depending That's on what funny. size it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where when they first came out, you would pay hundreds of dollars. Yeah, it was for state that. of the art. Thousand dollars, yes. something. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just a new thing. Yes. And only the wealthiest people would be able to afford for that. that yeah. Yeah. That's laughable. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, and yeah. the microwave oven was designed by the Germans. I don't know if you've heard of that. No. I read that. Interesting. As no. a device to slowly kill populations. Interesting. Well, I'm not the expert on it, but, but speaking of Germany, you know, back in World War II, the uh, the Nazis nice. had a take on a lot of this stuff, yeah. and they mm -hmm. said they were involved with aliens heavy duty, yes. too. Yeah, that's right, because Hitler had a, a big interest yes. in, in sort of the thing. UFO kind yes. of thing. They, as a matter of fact, the Germans even built a a uh, type of a saucer, and they put some kind of... Um, yep. Some people thought maybe it was an alien thing. I think they actually, you know, just built it themselves and wanted to experiment with using the technology and stuff like that but again you know hitler you know he always had a, some kind of interest and a connection mm -hmm. with um uh the occult he, right he was a, big, yes. a big believer in the occult yes telepathy and, mm -hmm. and, and uh psychic abilities and that right. you probably might even know more about that than me i don't really know the his history too much about um hitler i did hear that he was very um in tune to that sort of thing and you know yep. yeah very big into and he that. thought if he had all the, the religious items like the uh, uh from jesus and the last supper and all that kind of stuff he'd mm -hmm. be have all the power yes yeah, yeah. the holy yeah. grail that kind yes, of right. that's, well, that's yeah, what yeah. he was all about you know with power or, or, yeah. or, the, or the ark of the covenant that's right. the big thing yes <laughs> and that is an amazing thing in so itself. So that was part of what he went around doing all these things for, because he wanted to have them treasures as p power, power items. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You yeah. realize the Ark of the Covenant, how long ago that was, right? That literally has atomic properties. Mm. They've proven this through history. Interesting. Like, nuclear, back then. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Where did that technology come from? Mm hmm. Where do you guys think that technology yeah. came from <laughs> thousands of years ago before Christ? So as we come to the end of our show, we want to thank you guys for telling Absolutely. us your story and talking yes. 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 to do appreciate all yes. that. Yeah. Um, how do people find out if they need some help from you guys? Like, um, okay, well, um, if, you want to, if you want to find my website, I have a website called ERC, which stands for Extraterrestrial Research Center. Mm -hmm. And you can find my website by going to www.erc2explore. That's www.erc2explore.com. Yes. And from there, um, there's a lot of information and videos you can watch and educational material to learn about the field of ufology. Wow. And also, too, um, there's a section that somebody wants to report um, an abduction case or a UFO sighting, that's something you can definitely do. Mm. Although uh, we only accept certain cases with, that have uh, either some video or photographic evidence, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, uh, Phantom, Phantom Detectives is on Facebook? PhantomDetectives.org, Facebook? yes. Yeah. yes. Yep. Phantom that's our, our, um, you can find us yeah. on um, Facebook and on our website, www.phantomdetectives.org. And I am also on Facebook under um, Psychic Medium, Autumn Melissa, so reach out anytime if you have any questions. AutumnMelissa.com? Yes, dot well, uh, so you can find me on the web at PsychicMediumAutumnMelissa.com, but you can find me under the same name on Facebook. So, Very awesome. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do is, and again, thanks for coming to the show. We're going to thanks bring for on having us. the actual yes. one that developed and created, created yes. fan detectives. He's coming in a couple minutes. 
It's going to be Joshua Cherry, so don't go anywhere. Stay yes. tuned. Stay tuned. We're coming back. Yep. Joshua Chairs, the uh, founder and director of Phantom Detectives, live with us here, as it was awesome to have Melissa, his teammate, Psychic Medium, and of course, Rick Warner, uh, the investigator, just here. Now we have Joshua. Welcome, all the way from Oxford, Pennsylvania. You are the man that created this amazing show, Phantom Detectives. Yes, sir. Yes, I am, and I am the founder, uh, director, and investigator for the team. Um, I also have um, basically another uh, platform that I also own called Dark Matter News. Uh, we will dive into that later on, which is a paranormal news hub. Um, so I'm really looking forward to talking with the uh, paranormal investigating uh, with you from your end and your listeners' end. Nice. All right, so what I would like to do is start the show with your segment here. We have you live, and again, thank you for coming and being a guest with us. Um, Absolutely. How did you come up with the idea to start this paranormal investigation idea and team? Well, the idea was basically I decided in August of 2020 I needed uh, to start a new team because I felt the old team that we were on um, basically wasn't progressing in a way that I thought that needed done. So I went ahead, created uh, in August uh, 20th of 2020, created gotcha. business cards, created um, social media pages, right. created um, a team email, had the logos designed, right. had a website built uh, by Kuki Info Media in India. Um, so basically we started doing, um, uh, we're under a new banner basically. So what, what my idea was after watching the movie Sherlock Holmes and Phantom of the Opera, I said, okay. why don't I just take these ideas and put them together? Mm. And also there was an old 1950s comic called Phantom Detectives um, back in the uh, day. So I said, I'm going to take these both these names and put them together. And wow. that was the overall idea of the inspiration for the uh, team. And we did our first official pre-investigation at a place called the Selma Mansion, which is based out of uh, Norristown, Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. uh, very hit. Very historic place, dates back to the 1790s. Nice. And there we actually got to meet a guy named Brian J. Cano from the show called The Haunted Collector. He is the tech manager on the show with Ed and Lorraine Warren's uh, nephew, uh, oh, John Zappas. Wow. So basically, uh, he was like a tech manager. He's related to, um, he's actually, you know, was actually worked at John Zaffis, who's a nephew, Ed and Lorraine. Wow. And um, basically, um, so in terms of all that, basically, I, I got to, we actually got to learn a lot from him that night. So he actually showed us how to set up the SLS camera, That's how so to cool. run the, the EMF meters, how to do EVPs, how to do thermal camera sweeps, and just gave us a really great crash course on everything. So what we did was me and my former lead investigator, we took that knowledge that we learned from Brian, and we did our first inve official investigation at a place called the Sanderson Museum, mm. uh, which is based out of Chadsford, Pennsylvania. Gotcha. Uh, this, mu this museum is basically very historic. Uh, the Christian Sanderson was a well-known um, musician, poet. He was also a radio host. He was also um, very, uh, he actually played violins. He was very well respected and held square dances a lot in the Chad's Ford area. Nice. He also, um, basically there's actually like inside the museum, there's a bandage uh, from President Abraham Lincoln that was taken on him when he was basically, uh, after he was killed by John Wilkes Booth in 1865. There's a, a purse from the Jenny Wade house there. Wow. Um, there's actual, actual letters from Helen Keller, Shirley Temple, Sitting Bull. Uh, so he had a lot of dignitaries and stuff right to him. Wow. So what we did was we set up our uh, equipment in different parts of the museum. We, you know, we had a, a you know, EV, EVP recorders, uh, you know, uh, security cameras like DVR security cameras, right. and then we also had um, basically you know EMF meters like this. This is a Mel meter. Nice. Uh, it's, it, it measures temperature and electromagnetic field, and you can see it right here. Basically, yeah. it, you know, just shows you the temperature of the meter. So this is the. Uh, it's also a REM pod, which basically does that. So you kind of see it kind of, you know, oh, it yeah. likes it. it's a motion it's a motion sensor device. So uh, what we did was, after doing this investigation, we were in the violin room, which is known to be, um, you know, where uh, Christian Sanderson was known to inhabit the most. And there, mm -hmm. basically, um, the security camera was going off, basically, if like a motion sensor camera, and it wasn't us. We weren't in the room on wow. top of the uh, on top of the EMF meters, which were going off like nonstop, the tri-field and the mill meter were going off on top of wow. an orb flew by, flew by basically right on top of the uh, right on top of the left hand of the uh, museum 
right inside the museum room. So when you can add the EMF meters, when you can add the security camera going off on its own, you can add the, uh, the picture of the orb, that gives you layers upon layers. Wow. So we took that knowledge and so we captured several EVPs in um, that during that first investigation. And then right. our second investigation we did was a place called the Mill of Anselma. And this place um, actually was founded by Samuel Lightfoot in 1747. Wow. It's the continuing oldest operating mill in the United States. They do like uh, corn, they do grain, they do soy, uh, wheat, flour, all kinds of various things there. And a famous uh, poet named Sarah Oberheiser uh, stayed there in the 1920s. Wow. Um, also a famous uh, a guy named Oliver Collins, who was the last mill right there. Um, so basically, we did an apparel investigation there in January of 2021, wow. and there um, we were basically we were the only ones on the property that night when we set up our equipment. And this is on our YouTube channel, Phantom Detectives LLC. You can see a door from the mill was bolted shut, completely latched, lashed up, and everything. Mm. Um, basically, flew open by itself. I have wow. no reasonable explanation how that happened um and basically when the thing was bolted shot i tried to figure out like if there was wind or something i could have pushed it but me and my former lead investigator weren't even on the property that night basically wow. it was just us so for that thing to fly open by itself like that um was beyond it was i have no reasonable scientific explanation why it happened and then also that wow. night we um where there's an we also have a video of a rope swinging by itself on the second floor wow. we were on the third floor at the time so Pretty much, this rope was going to come like this back and forth, yep. and um, basically, that I never had uh, seen that happen on an investigation. And then, when I was on the third floor, um, doing uh, what we call phantom time, it's our EVP session where we take a voice recorder and we, you know, just try to record spirit voices with it. Right. Um, on the third, on the third floor of the mill, we actually um, caught this EVP that said "Go, go!" Like I was like, "Whoa, this is holy heck! Wow. This is scary." And this is right after a guy that we had, um, Mark Anthony, the psychic lawyer, who joined our team as a researcher. Right. Mark um, um, basically is a psychic lawyer, psychic explorer. He actually solved uh, famous cases. He's been featured on Gaia TV. Um, also, wow. um, basically, okay. several other. He's been on Coast to Coast AM. He's one of the most. Uh, he's, he's been to Oxford School in England, basically for you know. So he's one of the top mediums in the world. All right, we're talking about now. You know, you joined forces with Melissa and Rick. Yes. How did now that, that work out? Sure. So basically, in March of 2021, now Melissa Rick joined the team. Okay. Uh, basically, first Rick joined. Um, basically, so I invited him to do uh, to bring his skills from you know the MUFON background, the UFO background, into right. our organization because he had skills in field uh, field surveying. Right. He had skills in um, basically interviewing witnesses and clients, yep. and he also yep. had. Um, skills basically with um you know basically analyzing different uh, patterns and flight patterns of ufos so what i thought that i wanted to bring more diversity in the team and i thought that rick really was able to bring those skills right. into our uh into the talent pool of phantom detectives right. so basically um what i actually pointed him as the first official tech manager which he still serves continually to this day and during our next our first investigation of the betsy ross house the betsy ross house is very historic George Washington visited there in 1776. The nation's first flag was sewn there, and many reports of people seeing Betsy's spirit in her yes. room, as well as down in the basement area. Mm. So we um, booked the investigation through historic Philadelphia. Wow. And then basically, um, through that investigation, we actually, Rick and uh, our previous lead investigator were down in the basement area um, doing um, EVP session, basically. And there they captured uh, some growls, like that, really like, like kind of like that. Wow. Which were completely menacing. And those are on our website, phantomdetectives.org, right. um, where you can, under the EVP section. So we actually captured those, and I went ahead and posted them on the site. They came out of Rick's uh, uh, voice recorder. And then when I was upstairs in Betsy's um, room, basically, I took a, a, a thermal camera. And the thermal camera, I'll give a quick little breakdown of what it is. It's a really simple little device. It's a really cool. It's called a FLIR. Nice. And what this does is it basically takes hot and cold signatures. You can kind of see us. On Infrared, the thing. Infrared, yep. So Got anything that's, if, if it's someone that was living, it would be like a red or an orange. Right. Or, um, bas and basically, if it was someone that was uh, that non-living, it would be a cold signature, like a blue. Got so it. basically, okay. so, so so basically, there I was actually I pointed and clicked in, uh, in Betsy's room, and I captured this silhouette of a figure. 
great next door event. So I definitely think that was Betsy Rolfs. And then wow. I called an EV, EVP in the opposite room in the guest room and said, I've been here too. So basically it must have been, um, you know, one of Betsy's husbands that was trying to communicate with us. Yeah. Um, so, so after that investigation, Melissa came in um, because she was studying, um, you know, mediumship, advanced right. mediumship right. and right. psychic develop psychic development under someone named Cindy Kaiser from the show The Holzer Files. Okay. And The Holzer Files are a show um, on Discovery Plus about Dr. Hans Holzer, who was the first uh, ghost hunter in America. Wow. Um, his daughter, his daughter Alexandria, reopened these 50 to 60 year old cases with um, someone named Dave Schrader from Darkness Radio, uh, Cindy Kaiser, who is Melissa's mentor, and wow. of course, Shane Pittman, who is a tech manager. Um, so Cindy actually recommended um, basically Melissa to me because she was one of her students, basically. Okay. And I thought that Melissa, especially in studying advanced psychic development and remote viewing and all those skills, her joining the team in June of 2021 was absolutely awesome. And right before she joined, we actually made a major purchase. Um, the former um, Dark Matter Digital Network news anchor, a fellow by the name of Leo Ashcraft, reached out to us wow. in May of 2020. Um, he worked for Art Bell on Midnight in the Desert, and he read and said, would you guys be interested in buying my news service that I had for Art? Wow. And I said, um, what, what is it? It's like, uh, So basically, Dark Matter News was a five-minute newscast at the bottom of our, every hour of, of Art Bell's show. Wow. So we went ahead, we made an offer, we purchased the rights to the name, Dark Matter News. We wow. purchased the rights to the, to the logos. Um, we also purchased the rights to the website, wow. the audio files. So everything that came with the sale, it was a um, undisclosed amount. So um, when he reached out and we bought that, um, basically what we did was we rebranded it under Phantom Detectives LLC. Um, so it's like it's like a division of our paranormal research team. So now yep. we relaunched that for a news hub of all things UFOs, all things ghosts, all things Bigfoot, all things conspiracy or unexplained phenomena. We um, post that on our website, darkmatternews.com. I was going to say, these are all things you can get on your website because I've checked the website out several times. Yep. It's a really awesome website, by the way. It's amazing. And you can get all these things he's talking about. It's all on that site. It's unbelievable. Um, what I want to do is, because you know we're looking at time at this point, and I want to wrap up the show with you. What would you say is the most amazing uh, opportunity you had that was like mind blowing in your investigation. If you had to pick something, what would have been one that really is like, wow, you know, this is amazing that this is really happening and we have the proof of it, we have evidence? What would you say it would be? I want to say, out of all the investigations that we've done right. over the last two years, and we've grown quite a bit. I'm going to say the one that really defines me is the Selma Mansion, where, where we were with Brian J. Cannon and Melissa. We, we actually did our fourth investigation there in okay. June of 2021. Nice. And that night, basically, Melissa was picking up on a servant lady, um, basically, uh, named Martha, basically. So we went ahead and we captured her uh, image on the thermal camera. Wow. And the night that I was there, it, the activity was insane. Uh, wow. The uh, actual... The uh, actual Selma Mansion was founded by Melissa was picking up and picking up a connection to President Abraham Lincoln. Wow! Uh, and basic, and I did some research in the history, and I found out that the um, person that created the mansion was a name a guy by the, um, you know, that's, the name is Casey, but he was a great grandfather of uh, base, General General Andrew Porter, who was a great grandfather of Mary Todd Lincoln, basically uh, wow. President Lincoln's She's picking wife. Picking that up. Yep. That's so that, amazing. So she's able to Wow. She's able to she's able to detect that, and basically, I went to the history and back checked it, and she was spot on with it. And the wow. night that we were there, there's a place called the Toy Room on the third floor. Mm -hmm. um, that um, there, that was the night that basically we had a REM pod set up. We had um, Sasha had her electro uh, electroscope, a paranology device. It's a little picks up static electricity. Wow. And um, in the in the toy room area, the uh, that the EMF meters were going off. The K2 meters were going off. Wow. So the energy the, was high. Um, Absolutely. Like wow. I saw a door flew open by itself a wow. couple minutes prior to going up there. And then what was wild was uh, we had a guest investigator by the name of Ashley Yeager. Her husband was actually, you know, coming in to pick her up for the night. Yeah. And he thought he saw a um, in the middle of standing on the third floor, like a person with brown hair. And I said, were you any of you guys up there in that third floor doll room or toy room? And I said, no, none of us were up there at that wow. time. We were on the third, first floor. And then the same thing that was wild was basically when I was at the I was watching the command center because I was 
um, basically got my COVID vaccine, so I was just kind of taking it easy, you know, right. and um, watching the DVR system that, you know, notify them. So what was wild was the REM pod, we had uh, people, there was little beep, 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 REM pods going off. Right. And um, basically what was interesting was like every time that it was going, it was going to the piano room. Every time I like, I was, wasn't in that room and that thing was going off like crazy. Wow. But then when I walked, when I walked into that room, it completely stopped uh, basically almost like completely dead. So it's almost like as soon as I would leave, that thing would just go off again. So sometimes wow. these devices and these electronics that we use, right. they, um, the, the spirits like kind of pick and choose how they want to use Which them, when they, they want to use them. Yeah, exactly. It's like basically here's a toy. Here's all these different toys. Basically, I'm going to set up this one, this one, that one. You know? right, right, right. And we talked about that in depth pretty much with Melissa and Rick earlier. But now coming to a close, if you close, my last question would be, what is the future looking like for Phantom Detectives? Well, there's a lot of things basically going on. Um, the first uh, thing basically for Phantom Detectives is basically we're going to be moving our content over to Roku, Fire, Apple, and awesome. Google Play. Nice. Um, we, we were having – we're staying on YouTube for a while, but we feel YouTube is not um, a good place for paranormal uh, investigators. So we're going to be moving over to a new platform gotcha. called Second Team Entertainment. Um, Brian uh, basically said so we're going to be moving all of our content over there in the coming weeks. So nice. people can still watch us. We're going to be on Fright Night Fridays, which is basically where um, we're going to be able to be doing that. So that's the first cool. um, good news. And wow. the second uh, piece of information is we're going to be doing a, something called World's Largest Ghost Hunt on September 25th, 2022. That amazing. Um, yeah. That is uh, an event where uh, two, 300 plus teams from around the world investigate at once simultaneously via live stream. Wow. So we're going to, this is a truly worldwide event. And wow. we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing the Bolton Mansion up in Levittown, which is right outside of Philadelphia. Um, yeah. it's, it dates back to like 1687. Wow. Um, very, very historic. And uh, we're going to be doing that for um, like from like 7 to 12. And we're going to be live streaming National Ghost Hunting Day around 8 o'clock um, to 9 o'clock, which is the same time we did last year when we did the Sanderson Museum. Right. So that is definitely um, on another thing on the bucket list. Another thing we're doing was with Dark Matter News, we're actually moving the audio files, all the original uh, audio files that Leo Ashcraft recorded for Art and 15. Wow. We're going to be putting them on, on our Dark Matter News website, so the, the Paranormal Newscast, so people can download and enjoy the original ones. And I'll be nice. making new segments for those um, in a couple of weeks here. Once I get the proper um, headset, the uh, mics, the mixer, and all that, I'm going to be recording new uh, newscasts, nice. just like Leo did for Art. I'm going to be putting that on the radio network so people can say, hey, UFO spotted in Anchorage, Alaska, and I'll go through that. And That's very cool. you know, I think that'll, that'll be a lot of fun. And of course, we'll um, keep the news stories on the news website going. And um, basically, then we're also going to be focusing on, you know, wrapping up the year. We're going to be trying to, you know, book a couple more investigations, get as nice. much of our content over on Roku Fire TV. Awesome. And then, of course, next year, we're also going to be producing a documentary, which Rick will be working on, um, you know, basically a paranormal documentary. Yes. So that will be a lot of fun. And I'm planning on getting many big names in the field in that project. That's amazing. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I want to thank you for coming to the show, along with Melissa and Rick as well. It was awesome having you. The stories you guys had were so awesome, and it's like amazing we've got evidence. And we're going to show our viewers this because I've got some of this footage that we talked about. You're going to get to see on the show. So I appreciate everybody listening and watching. I'm Marky Z, my partner, Rock Dude, and I'm out. Still, and then not moving here. I got some. Oh, uh, guess what? An orb just literally flew right in front of you. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Another one flew by. Okay, so. I have some questions I want to ask. Um, are there any spirits present in this room? If there are, please cross the dowsing rods forward for yes and back for no. Are there any spirits present in this room? Okay, okay, thank you. Reset, the, can you please put the dowsing rods back to the center? Thank you, a little bit more on the right, perfect. Um, how many spirits do we have right now in this catacomb? If it's if it's one, um, if it's more than one, please cross the rods forward for yes. Okay, it's more than one. Okay, can you please reset the dowsing rods to the center, please? Thank you.